In 1963, a gas well in southern Uzbekistan suffered a blowout at a depth of 2.4 kilometers. The natural gas caught fire and burned steadily for the next three years. This seemingly unquenchable fire was causing the loss of more than 12 million cubic meters of gas each day. That's enough to supply the needs of many major cities and roughly the equivalent volume of 12 Empire State Buildings. No one in the country knew how to put the fires out, and by 1966 all attempts to do so had failed. It was at this point of desperation that dropping a nuclear bomb on the fires seemed like a pretty great idea to engineers and officials. Physicists calculated that if a nuclear bomb was detonated at a depth of around 1,500 meters and close to the shaft of the well, the resulting pressure could blow out the fire. Researchers ultimately calculated that the bomb needed to be 30 kilotons, or double the power of the bomb, dropped on Hiroshima. After confirming the calculations, officials decided that a nuclear explosion was the best way to stop the raging fire. In 1966, two boreholes were drilled, sloping towards the blowout region, determined to be at a depth of 1.4 kilometers. The 30 kiloton bomb was lowered into the most promising borehole and then the well itself was backfilled with cement. Then, they detonated the bomb. There's no better way to understand what that day was like other than this account from the Soviet newspaper. Pravdovostoka of Tashkent On that cold autumn day in 1966, an underground tremor of unprecedented force shook the with a sparse grass cover on white sand. A dusty haze rose over the desert. The orange-colored torch of the blazing well diminished, first slowly, then more rapidly until it flickered and finally died out. For the first time in 1,064 days, quiet descended on the area. The jet-like roar of the gas well had been silenced. In 20 seconds, a three-year-long fire had been extinguished using a nuclear explosion, much to the satisfaction of Soviet engineers. The test was a success, but soon engineers were presented with another case to test their experiment. A few months later, a fire broke out at the Pamuk gas field and spread to the surface through various boreholes. Engineers determined that in order to stop this fire, they would need to lower a 47 kiloton bomb to a deeper depth of 2.4 kilometers. The bomb was lowered into the well, backfilled with cement as before, and detonated. After a few days, the fire had stopped. It was after this second successful attempt at putting out large gas fires that the Soviets had found what they considered a highly practical use for nuclear explosions. They used nuclear bombs to stop a fire in May 1972 in the city of Mary in Asia. In July of that same year, they also used a nuclear explosion to stop a leaking well in Ukraine. The last known attempt to use this practice was in 1981 on a well on the northwestern coast of Russia. Of all of the explosions, the second one, at the Pamuk gas field, was the deepest and most powerful. And that's the story of how excess nuclear weapons, curious Soviet engineers, and rampant natural gas fires lead to the underground detonation of massive nuclear bombs during the Cold War.